we've seen the decision making move from the manufacturer all the way through to the consumer deciding. So there's been a major power shift. You know, how do we solve problems rather than sell products? How can I use these new technologies to service the customer's needs better than the incumbents do? If you can think like a digital startup, then you're going to win. What do you think are the characteristics of the problem that a startup could successfully uh, solve as opposed to areas where large companies are likely or more likely to take over the task? I talk about this quite a lot and I talk about one, one of the meta trends that's been driving um, this entire industrial wave has been the, the power shift from the manufacturer to the consumer. So through e-commerce and you know, you know, omni-channel logistics, we've seen the decision-making move from the manufacturer or, or the broadcaster in the media industry, for example, about you know, what is shown, what is ordered, how you buy things, where you buy things, when you buy things, all the way through to the consumer deciding what I'm going to watch, when I'm going to watch it, what I'm going to buy, where it's going to be delivered. So there's been a major power shift. And most businesses, really struggle with that they're really struggling with this um, because their leadership was trained in the downswing of the last wave so they were and the downswing period of, of each of these waves of change is much more about exploitation and efficiencies and leaning out the supply chain and basically you know taking the innovations and, and that have now become mature and looking for efficiencies and looking for ways to drive down costs and those kinds of things. that's what they were trained to do we're now in an upswing period now, this is all about entrepreneurship. This is all about experimentation. And most business leaders don't know how to do this. They don't know how to run a business like this. And one of the things they've tried, as an example is by segmenting off and creating a separate um, sort of innovation hub. You know, a skunks works on the side that does all of this very experimental stuff. The challenge a lot of them are finding is that whilst they might come up with new ideas, Adopting them into the business becomes incredibly difficult because you, you're sort of taking this new entrepreneurial element and trying to merge it into the main business as usual. So what we find is that businesses are actually pretty good at using te new technologies as a way to um, control what they already do, to create efficiencies uh, through the, you know, the automation of tasks, to use things like um, the Internet of Things to identify where there's waste, to identify the way there's excess costs. What they're not very good at is think, I'm looking at how they can completely rethink their business using these new technologies. So, you know, how do we solve problems rather than sell products? If you take our big um, established organizations, they're very good at looking at new technologies and thinking, right, can it make us more efficient? Can it make uh, find ways to drive out cost? Can it reduce labor? Can it? you know, get rid of our level of energy consumption or reduce the energy waste. They're good at that because they know that business and they're just looking at ways to do that. They're not good at completely rethinking the value proposition to say, how do we serve the needs of the customer better using these digital technologies, knowing full well that it might actually destroy my incumbent existing business because they don't want to. So they get trapped in the Kodak scenario of, you know, Kodak that used to be about capturing and sharing memories, but forgot that and realized that, um, sorry, didn't realize, but believed it was about selling film because that's what they did. That was their product. So Rochester um, out in the US was a massive film production plant. That was where all their profits came from. They thought they were in the film business. They weren't in the film business. They were in the memory sharing business. And if they'd have remained in the memory sharing business, then digital photography, which they invented, would have been used as a new way to help customers share memories, capture and share memories. But it wasn't, they thought they were in the film. And this is a problem that a lot of companies have. They look at their existing product lines and they look about protecting their market share and looking at these new technologies as a way to protect that market share, rather than maybe a small startup which could, doesn't have the baggage, doesn't have the infrastructure, doesn't have the cultural issues that the larger organizations have, can look at the customer and go, how can I use these new technologies to service the customer's needs better than the customer incumbents do? And because they're gonna be lean and mean, they can probably do that at a much lower cost as well. And that's why you get you know, companies like you know, Uber. Uber realized very quickly that you know, it really all it's doing is putting you know, consumers and drivers together in, in a trusted way. It's an app, it's a piece of software, but it creates a, a multi-billion dollar business. If you can think like a digital startup, then you're going to win.
Now, the problem with big, big organizations is they really struggle with that. They really struggle with that. They struggle with the, what I call the sort of the yin and yang of bringing both elements of sort of certainty and reliability and also creativity and innovation together to create this sort of bimodal mode of operation.